Welcome to Corrective Consciousness, episode 215, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. I'm your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And if you were paying attention to Tuesday's episode, if you were just listening to Reactive, and you were like, okay, I know what's going to be going on on Thursday. I know what's going to be going on on Thursday. (laughs) Just in case you're one of our odd followers that just listens to Corrective, uh, (laughs) but... uh, um, uh, we actually uh, decided to put off our sixth sixth part of our uh, Castlevania review, uh, the re- review of the entire series, and uh, we are um, continuing on uh, from our reactive consciousness episode because we just had so much to talk about this week. We wanted to give everything its due, so um, to uh, start everything off, we'll we'll go over some nice. Um, uh, fan projects, uh, some homebrew projects that have been going on in the console scene with the X Station. We we talked about the X Station, uh, which is going to be the hot new optical drive emulator for the PlayStation One. Uh, the pre-order is up, and it's still up. Like you can actually yeah, still amazing. do it. <laughs> uh, they are making these to basically to order. They're going to order enough to fulfill the entire pre-order, and they're going to have them ready by next month, <laughs> which is. <laughs> Mind-boggling. I, I don't know why all the other companies have a problem with this, or all the other fan projects have a problem with this, and this this one's like going to come out fully formed and uh, with no ordering hassle whatsoever. It's up at Castlemania Games. Uh, both Lotus and I uh, pre-ordered ours right away, um, and you could still do it. You didn't miss out. <laughs> it's, it's, it, this one is getting rave reviews from everybody who's gotten a test uh, version of it. Uh, it purports to be 100% compatible with um, uh, all of the uh, images of uh, PlayStation games that are out there. They, they say that uh, it's going to basically run every game, uh, no problem. It might have like little little things that'll get ironed out through firmware updates, which is very normal for a new product, but um, sounds amazing. Uh, you're going to need to find, uh, find a mo- uh, competent modder, though, because it is a uh, complicated uh, install, so um, definitely do that. And try to track down a um, PlayStation 1 5501 model. Um, that, that's the one to get. Uh, and I'm really excited about this because uh, we're, we're also getting PlayStation Digital soon, Lotus, so um, this will be a good time to, to be a modern PlayStation 1 gamer, for sure. Mm-hmm. Also, in the same vein... Uh, this was one of the very first optical drive emulators like announced. Um, the the Saturn Satiator. Uh, so this was a guy who found out that he could um, he could make an optical drive emulator that worked in the Saturn's uh, like uh, video card port, which is in the back where uh, the battery is. You may not even know it's there um, because it's 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 back there and you never really put anything in there unless you have like the special video uh, MPEG um, upgrader uh, that was Japan only and only works with like, you know, half a dozen games, something like that. Um, But uh, yeah, this guy um, has uh, is professor abrasive, I think is his name. Um, He has been working on this for a long time and uh like people have been pretty upset about his updates uh he's had a patreon going uh to basically fund this uh but like he announced it and the price is ridiculous it's 260 dollars uh yeah that's like twice what i would have hoped it's twice what anybody would have hoped um it, it it has the advantage in that you could still use your disc games um, you know, if, if you have this because it goes into a, a rarely used port. Um, but, I mean, I already have a Rhea, and if I'm going to go with another one, I'm either going to go with the Fenrir or the Mode, which work perfectly uh, and are not nearly the price. I mean, the, the Terra Onion Mode, which... The Terra Onion is famous for being on the expensive end. Uh, it's cheaper than this. <laughs> um, it, it's 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 a shame. Um because uh, nobody's going to buy this. And uh, the worst part is he's very much not being fair to his Patreon uh, subscribers. So the people that have been donating him like five bucks a month, and that's at the low end, right? 
Um, you know, most most people that do a Patreon will probably do five bucks. I would say. Um, they uh, he's only giving them a fifteen dollar discount. Um, and oh come on! They've they've supported him for three years. Yeah, they've uh, already given years. him like a hundred dollars. Yeah, no, it's it's ridiculous. Um, or more than that if it's three years. Yeah, they they should be giving him a, them a credit. Um, on on their donations to it. I mean, honestly, um, is it, it's it's bad form all around, and um, I don't suspect it, this will be. Um, it looks nice. It it looks very professional. It look like has nice packaging, uh, but um, it's it's not worth it when you have what th- three competitors that are really good. I mean, uh, two of them are are at least really good, and we we got in on the early one that still works at least. Right? Yeah, um, the early one still seems to play every game. Like it works. There, there, there have been it's updates just, with it. Yeah, it it works. It's just uh, a pain in the ass. But <laughs> it's not even that bad. Although, although yeah. well, if you, if you don't install the fan made menu, then it's a serious pain in the ass. But I once mean, you have that, it's fine. To be fair, Lotus, I set up yours. <laughs> yes, you did. It, it was it was a bitch to set up. But once you have it set up. It, it runs fine, but yeah, I, the, the hoops you need to jump through when you first buy it, those admittedly do suck pretty hard. I, I, you weren't around when I burned every one of those games and re-ripped them. <laughs> yeah, they were in a different format. You were not of... around for the hundreds of hours that I spent crafting uh, the library that I put together for us. That's true. <laughs> but it works, and uh, nowadays you have much better options. Uh, you can find repositories for those. But um, anyway... Um, yeah, uh, I don't. I don't see this going well. A two hundred sixty dollars is ridiculous. Um, I'm sorry, and and you're not treating your homeboys well. I mean, your your, your Patreon subscribers should be uh, the people that you you bow down to because they made it happen. Um, you know, they believed in you. It just kind of sucks. Um, and so, um, but I I definitely recommend this X station. What is it? Ninety nine dollars. Um, yeah, ninety nine dollars plus tax, obviously, shipping. but like, maybe this depends on where you are in the world. But for us, it was free North shipping, yeah. which is crazy. Free shipping, and it'll work right off the bat. Um, and uh, I know a, uh, the, they give you a good list of in- installers um, that you could use in order to get it done. And like I said, PS Digital is coming out soon, and it'll power- pair right up with it. And apparently it works just fine if you have uh, a PSIO and um, switchboard installed. You don't need to remove it, which is really cool for the people that already got in on that travesty. Um, and moving on from that, um, I just quickly wanted to go uh, mention the stuff that happened at DC Fandom, at least just the movie stuff, because it was like the biggest stuff. Um, but they they did a, uh, uh, a uh, cast... Uh, trailer for Su- the Suicide Squad, which I'm very excited for. Um, I mean, the original Suicide Squad movie, uh, I have never even gotten all the way through. I do not care about it. I did not like it even in the first five minutes. Um, but uh, it, this one is going to be made by James Gunn, uh, who I like a lot. And uh, he's made my favorite Marvel movies, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and I like his movies before that. Uh, he made Slither, uh, which is cr- quite great, and he helped make Lollipop Chainsaw, which I love. Um, so James and I, I think I think it's a running thing in his movies too, where Lloyd Kaufman from mm-hmm. Troma cameos in some form or another. I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy two, but I oh, saw him. Great. I saw him for a second in Guardians one. Guardians two might be my favorite Marvel movie. Um, I really love that movie. I thought it was really good and really well done. Um, uh, it... Mine's Thor 2. Oof. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like Thor 2 better than Thor 1. That's, that's what I really? think Thor, yeah. Um, that itself is a hot take. <laughs> but uh, Thor 3, I think everybody can agree that Thor 3 is probably the best of the Thor movies. Um, th- Rag- Ragnarok is, uh, is was really good. Ta- Taika Waititi, I mean... He knows what he's doing. But uh, speaking of, he's in the Suicide Squad. Um, <laughs> nice. He, he's the like the shark man. <laughs> um, That's amazing. Nathan Fillion's in it. Um, uh, Idris Elba was uh, uh, um, Pete Davidson. 
uh, like all kinds of famous people are in this, and they're as people that you you don't know. Uh, there's like, yeah, I've captain, heard that they're like really weird characters. Really like obscure, Nathan Fillion's even, a guy who can like tear his arm off, and that's his power. Nathan like, Fillion behold, is I remove my limb. His his name in in these it was as it was introduced in DC Comics, not in in the actual movie. But his name is Arm Fall Off Boy. Literally, that's how he was introduced as in the comics. Yeah, like I saw like a single panel of him, like clearly like an old comic, and he he actually said something like, you know, behold or like be amazed as I remove my limb, and like <laughs> who gives a shit? <laughs> so, um, I think he was part of the Legion of Superheroes, which has like a billion characters in it. Um, which is like it, it's a future Superman thing. And there's like a billion of them, and uh, and he goes to the future and fights with them every once in a while in the, in the old old Silver Age. The Silver Age is goofy as shit. But anyway, um, what are you talking about? Adam West Batman oh, is most hardcore Batman. It, it, if you want to see goofy, it, like Bat- Batman's nothing compared to the Superman shit that was going on that during that time. Um, like the Superman yeah. stuff is like whoa. <laughs> oh, you know what that reminds me of? I think this is from a Silver Age thing. But I couldn't believe it where uh, in Lego Batman 3, you could play as some of like the goofier Superman and Batman villains that you unlock, like sure. the Condiment King and you know, <laughs> yeah, he's, weird he's, bullshit. He's, he's from Batman the Animated Series, the Condiment King. Yeah, yeah like weird bullshit like that. Yeah. But one of the characters you can unlock, and I think I remember seeing this on like a Silver Age cover, was the guy who was like vertically divided, like half Superman, half Batman. I forgot what he was called. <laughs> It's amazing. I don't, I don't even know that. Um, but yeah, as big of a DC Comics fan I am, uh, I'm, I got a lot of them. Um, but I, I, I barely knew any of these characters. Um, well, you don't. You don't know Bloodsport, the Van Damme movie. I mean, the character. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. I think that's Id- Idris Elba's character. Yes. Um, so. Here's what I suspect. Uh, there, oh, John Cena's a character that I didn't even know. Um, uh, Is there, he some sort of invisible man? I forget. Um, Captain uh, Captain Boomerang's in the movie, which I, I didn't catch the uh, who that was. Uh, there's just a lot of people in this movie, and um, yeah, but arm fall off, boy. I, I need to return <laughs> to that. Uh, is based off of a character that was based off of a fan submission. Like nice. It's so so literally like some. Some six-year-old wrote up a character and sent it in. They were like, well, you won the contest, so we have to put him in. So yeah, it's like Mega Man, like, make the fire guy like a Zippo lighter. All right, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, literally, he he his power is that he can remove his limbs and beat you with them. Couldn't you also beat someone without removing your limbs? I guess you get a little yes. bit of an extra reach. <laughs> maybe maybe, yes, maybe you get a little could. bit of an extra reach, because there, there are... There are multiple Soulsborne characters, like the first boss in Dark Souls 2, an optional boss in Bloodborne that rip off their own arm, and now their reach is twice as long as before, <laughs> and they beat you with their own arm, it's like, oh shit. Uh, that reminds me of that, like, wushu movie, like, uh, it's like a, a kung fu movie where, like, a guy, like, loses his arm, like, they're, they're flying through the air, you know, uh, sword fighting in the air, and, uh, like one of the samurai or one of the ninjas or whatever they are there i think it's chinese so it's not samurai but um one of the guys gets his arms whacked off and what he does is he uses his other arm to sword fight and chop the other guy's arm off and put that arm back onto his <laughs> jesus <laughs> his shoulder and he's just like oh i'm fine now <laughs> are, are, this, well that's like that. rickio yeah where like he like he like ties his tendons back together like in a knot. Ugh, now it now disgusting. it works. Like what? <laughs> or or the guy who tries to choke him with his own assassins. Um, yeah, that movie. Wow. <laughs> and it's not even like that movie was surprisingly accurate to the manga. Yeah, yeah, very. Um, but like, remember when the the guy transformed at the end? Did you see his arms weirdly extend and looks like a bad effect? But that's literally how it was drawn. That was accurate. Remember when he pile drives somebody into a meat grinder? <laughs> Remember when he punches the entire wall of the prison out? Yep. Uh, Mr. Ryu, Mr. Ryu told me that that's how they end every Evo with a clip of him punching open the wall. You're all free. <laughs> you can go home now. <laughs> it's amazing. So good. But yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. So 
the the concept of this the original Suicide Squad in the in the comic books is that they put all kinds of bad crappy characters that nobody cares about in there and that yeah, is the yeah, whole yeah. point of the Suicide Squad. There there death is a real thing even back like in the early Suicide Squad because like they're characters that they're not commercially viable characters and you know what, they you know all have bombs like to attached to them so like if they don't perform the way they're supposed to they die well so. you know what this sounds like to me like like I, I was going to say a non-comedic take of the x-force scene in deadpool 2 yeah, but no, like exactly yeah but 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 then they have fucking arm fall off boy so it's a comedic take of a non-comedic take <laughs> of the comedic scene in Deadpool 2. <laughs> well, I mean, um, Suicide Squad was always tongue in cheek. Uh, I mean, okay, okay. You know, so it, it was always a, a comic where you're like, oh, I would, like these characters nobody cares about and they know it. Um, I, I hope to God. Like, I saw this as a joke tweet and I've mentioned it in the podcast before, but I hope that because James Gunn is directing this and he's got a sense of humor, I hope one of the characters at some point in the movie says, so what are we what are we supposed to be called then? Some sort of the Suicide Squad. <laughs> I, would, I would love that. So um, I'm or like th- this is Katana. You don't want to get killed by her. This is Bloodsport. You also don't want to get killed by him. Like this is n- other character. Don't oh definitely don't get killed by him. <laughs> it's like what? So um, you know this this game is or this movie is a uh, is a uh, um like a a reboot sequel. Like it it's not going yeah, to acknowledge. Yeah anything that happened before other than uh two characters uh two two three characters carry over and that's it uh yeah, harley, harley quinn, quinn obviously um viola davis as a character who is like the recruiter she's like you know the nick fury of oh uh, amanda waller yeah yeah um of, and and uh, and by the way speaking of harley quinn still being played by margot robbie oh yeah same same character uh well, and, what, uh, what if you could do the movie again but like this time it's good oh yeah <laughs> sign me up well i mean she, she, she does do like, no, her performance was fine in the previous way. movie. It's just that the movie fucking sucked. So like, yeah. here, here, why don't you why don't you play as Harley Quinn in a good movie? Uh, and Rick Flag. Uh, so um, those three characters carry over from the last one, and like nothing is mentioned about the last one really, <laughs> except you know that it ha- like I Remember guess that time in order Deadshot to get Viola was one of our group? And, no, <laughs> and Viola Davis and Harley Quinn forward and and Rick Flag forward, they'll say something, but you know, yeah. very throwaway. Um, but. Yeah, I'm excited about this because also um, James Gunn uh, successfully has taken loser characters and made them viable. Um, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy, like Guardians of the Galaxy, were always a fucking joke. I yeah, mean, they're like always. well loved, and they're like they're like there's a fucking talking a tree who could only say one sentence. He made that like an interesting character. <laughs> Yeah, like a, a beloved character, in fact. Um, and and Rocket Raccoon, who was a fucking joke in everything he ever showed up in, uh, is one of the, like the most beloved characters in the franchise. Uh, well, mean, I think I've awesome. mentioned this. Well, I think I've mentioned this before too. But I remember when Marvel vs. Capcom three was out, and then Ultimate came out, and they announced like the new characters that would join. <laughs> and this is before the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Sure. And one of them was Rocket Raccoon, and everybody was like, "Who the, who the fuck, fuck is Rocket guy? Raccoon?" And <laughs> they looked. Bradley up. Cooper plays him. <laughs> yeah, and they looked people. up. They're like, with with a name as dumb as Rocket Raccoon, and everybody was googling him, and they're like, "Who the fuck is this? Like, he's he's a no name character from a no name series. This is a waste of a character slot." And then when they actually Just played as him, he was surprisingly <laughs> badass, like with his lines and everything. They're like, oh, "You know, you know what? Okay, okay." And then like, I don't know if this was intentional, but that probably did help kind of pave the way for Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, it's it's just weird to collect the cast of characters and Rocky Raccoon who I thought was stupid last month, but now I realize might actually be pretty cool. So, um uh, there's also a character named the Polka Dot Man in this in this new movie. <laughs> like there's just like it's it's wild. Not to be uh, confused with the spot from <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> so, um what I'm suspecting is that uh, a lot of these characters that uh, like were announced are actually kind of like cameos. They die really quickly and early. Like I, I would sure. imagine that Pete Davidson's character just like just dies. Um, like it, it would it would just fit with his his kind of character uh, or his kind of you know acting and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I would imagine that John Cena isn't one of the main characters. I think he probably just wanted to die on screen in a funny way. You know, just stuff like that. So I mean, I I would do that. Yeah, like, me too. I mean, Brad Pitt. L- let me let me let me join this <laughs> stupid. Uh, what do you even call it? The stupid cast of characters and just just kill me off in some comical way. I'd be up for that. Yeah, I mean, um, happened with Brad Pitt in in Deadpool too. <laughs> 
I forgot Jesus he was Christ. even in that. Like that whole that whole X Force group was like he was the invisible guy. cameos, <laughs> and he he just showed up for half a second, his face, <laughs> and he That's dies. Great. <laughs> hilarious um so anyway um also uh a teaser trailer for the batman that actually everybody really liked <laughs> um it looks good uh he plays a very young uh robert pattinson plays a very young uh, bruce wayne uh, probably in his er- er- in his um early 20s um he's usually portrayed as somebody in his 30s yeah. Um, and so uh, this is going to be have kind of like a Batman Year One kind of feel, uh, probably e- even like a younger feel than than Batman Begins, which um, you know was probably the the first uh, take on like Batman Year One kind of stuff. But um, the big surprise with uh, the people were able to point out that the Penguin was in it very briefly, and uh, also uh, also it appears like the main villain at least at this point uh according to the trailer the way the ma- the trailer is making it seem is that the main villain looks to be the riddler um so i'm okay with that just yeah. like just so long as they don't do the joker for the 16th time yeah, like I mean, i'm i'm fine <laughs> i i think um i mean we we already had uh joker in a movie recently i mean it, no i know but they never fucking that. tire of him so i'm i'm okay with a different villain and the riddler is a compelling character anyway so you know, Col- I'm Colin Farrell in is apparently the penguin. So, um... no, Colin Farrell was bullseye. <laughs> is there anything you want? I, I'll give you anything you want. Yeah, give me a bloody costume. Really? Ugh. A leather coat? Okay, fine. Yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, this this is gonna be cool. I mean, uh, the Riddler is an iconic character that hasn't been uh, uh live at. Um, been play, uh, played live action uh, since yeah since Jim Batman Carrey. Forever, Jim Carrey, yeah since yeah, yeah Batman Forever, yeah, where so... where Jim Carrey played Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones played Frank Gorshin. That was weird. Uh, the the Riddler can be uh, extremely imposing in the right um, context. Well, yeah, his his first episode in the animated series that was great. Also, um, the way he's been in the Arkham trilogy uh for the video games he he was he's a he's awesome like uh, he's been awesome and kind of comical because he's still a dork if anybody ever stands up to him well he he's he's not physically imposing at all i mean that's yeah but it's it's not even that he's just also like even his lines can be comical where he's like you know i'm smarter than everybody this and that and then someone's like all right you're you're Shut the fuck up! I'm not working with you. It's like, oh, wait, wait, uh, actually, wait, but like, come, come back. I promise, I can offer you something. He's just, he's such a fucking dink, like when he's setting up for his big reveal. Yeah, and a comic book accurate penguin is certainly going to be interesting because uh, we've only ever seen uh, Danny DeVito penguin, which yeah, mutant is, penguin. He, he's, he's not like that in the comic books, folks. Uh, he and in the Arkham games, he like doesn't have a monocle. He had like a bottle shoved in his eye that was weird yeah uh so like in in the comic books he's he's physically imposing because he is a crime lord uh that's his thing and um he he has a lot of goons um way way more goons and them like you know he's a mafia uh mafia yeah he he's he's hammerhead yeah so he's imposing because of like the power he has in the city uh not because like he's a freak yeah, and considering Gotham is a crime-ridden shithole, being a crime lord in Gotham is a big deal. Yeah, so he's very imposing in that way. Of course, he has like you know the umbrella, the trick umbrellas that were added. Yeah, he has this thing age. with birds, but yeah, he doesn't solo fight you constantly with his goofy umbrellas. Yeah, I mean that's a Silver Age thing, uh, once again. But uh, in the modern era, he's very imposing. Uh, and does does he still quack like Burgess Meredith? <laughs> no, and wah, he doesn't wah, have wah, flipper wah, hands wah. like Danny DeVito. Uh, he doesn't yeah. live in the sewer, and he doesn't hang out with circus folk. Uh, that's and he doesn't. Thing. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> he doesn't. And he, have... and he doesn't. He doesn't ride a gigantic rubber ducky. Rubber duck, yeah. Um, he doesn't does, have pengu- like actual penguins that are weirdly, fiercely loyal to him. Uh, doesn't he try to eat a cat? Uh, no, uh, Catwoman put a bird in her mouth, and Penguin was like, okay, and grabbed a cat and like extended a knife no, blade from his umbrella. I, I, I think in the opening scene as an infant, he eats a cat. 
Oh, are you serious? I'm pretty darn sure that oh, that's okay. why Paul Rubens, who was his cast as his father for half a second. Um, really? Yeah, it's been too Peter long, man. man. I forgot this. That's crazy. <laughs> and that's the reason why they, uh, you know, uh, knowed him in the in the sewer. <laughs> like they 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 just pushed him off into the river and into runoff. Um, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Watch that again. He kills. He straight up kills a cat as an infant. Um. Wow. All right. Uh, and I think it's implied that he eats him. But <laughs> well, I mean, he has no problem eating. Like, I, I think we even see him eating raw fish. He's raw got those fish. like, he's got those sharp triangle teeth. Yeah, that version of the penguin has no basis on the source material whatsoever. Really, anything except yeah. that his name is Oswald Cobblepot. Yeah, nah. So, um, I mean, running for political office might have been a thing. Um, you know, but yeah, that's fair. Okay, I'll be mayor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm excited about this. I mean, um, uh, people were initially complaining, mostly people that were, um, you know, are, are always bashing the Twilight movies, which, you know, is very unoriginal. I mean, and, and mostly, I mean, the, the, the Twilight movies are, are pe- the fans of them know that they're not that great. Uh, <laughs> but you don't Especially need to bash the first them. One. You don't need to bash them in- eternally. And he's been a cool guy outside of the- those movies. Yeah, does uh, ever, did I ever forget he was in Harry Potter 4? Not to mention, like, the Lighthouse complaining and all about the other a ca- cool stuff he's been in. So. Yeah, well, not to mention complaining about an actor in a Batman movie based on a previous role they've played. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, it might the, be like, good. This, this has been happening. Well, not, not even they might be good. This has been happening for decades and people don't fucking learn. People complained about Ben Affleck because he was Daredevil 15 years ago. People complained about Michael Keaton because he was Mr. Mom. People complained about Heath Ledger because he was, I don't the know Night's his name, Tale Brokeback guy. Mountain guy. Yeah, Brokeback Mountain guy, yeah. Like, oh, but how could he be, how, how could an actor play a different character? Get your head out of your ass. Like, maybe with Michael Keaton it was the first time, but like, it just keeps happening. And specifically with Batman movies, every fucking time. Like, yeah. just watch the movie and see what happens. I mean, Ben Affleck's been a good Batman in bad Batman movies, unfortunately. Um, like, I, I yeah. like his portrayal and Well, and that, that's Demina. the thing. Everybody said, like, those movies sucked, but, like, but, uh, but Batman, fault. though, he was cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Margot Robbie and Ben Affleck have gotten the short end of the stick. I mean, Margot Robbie's... Not, like, not to mention, by the way, Ben Affleck... Has, was actually pretty decent, uh, so... By, by the way, not, not to mention Ben Affleck playing, like, kind of burned out... Like grizzled Batman, that's yeah, an interesting take. He's, he's a burned out Ben Affleck, so I mean. Yeah, and yeah, and and Jeremy Irons as Alfred, he's fucking done. Yeah, like he's like, I guess I'll still be Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> that like that was a great idea. Yeah, I mean they should have just given him them their own movie. I don't know why they they even bother with that Batman v Superman. Oh, and by the way, speaking speaking of the DC stuff, I don't think this is fandom stuff, but I, I had heard that the the Snyder cut of what was it, Justice League? Yeah. It's going to be like four hours long, so I wasn't interested in watching the, the Snyder slash Whedon cut, so I certainly won't be watching this shit. I just, I, I don't... Maybe it'll be more cohesive from a single director's perspective. I appreciate that, but four hours, like... I mean... This isn't... This is, Lord of the Rings, this is not. The DC Extended Universe movies have had a, a pretty poor track record. There hasn't been a an extremely great one. Uh, there have been a couple decent movies. Yeah, the, the the best I the best I've Shazam's heard has been Shazam. The best one. <laughs> yeah, and that one people didn't really gravitate towards. Yeah, Shazam's probably the best one, and then like, you it have felt Wonder out of Woman. place, and that's what made it better. Yeah, Wonder Woman Wonder was. Wonder Woman's good. Um, Wonder Woman was also like as good as it got. Wonder Woman's good. Uh, uh, Birds of Prey is like just below that, I would say. Uh, yeah, know, Birds of Prey I heard was all right. Yeah, yeah but uh, the rest of them. Like not even worth your time. Uh, I, I would I would even say. Um, I mean, Man of Steel is, takes way too much time on Krypton, and he fucking uh, murders a guy. Um, <laughs> I mean, like. And Pa Kent says maybe you should let those people in peril die. That's good advice from fucking Pa Kent, Mister Like Nothing But Wholesome. I mean, the the whole point of Superman is he's supposed to struggle with how strong he is but still have the light touch um yeah it, 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 and, and the thing is he learned all of his values from pa Kent. kind old farmers pa and ma kent's yeah. like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> anyway um also in in uh but i i think these two movies will be good uh let's just put 
put it that way. Um, I, I did like Joker, even though it's not related to these movies. I, I thought it was good. Um, well, maybe it's because it's not related to those movies. They labeled it as an Elseworlds movie. Um, yeah, I, fair I don't know enough. if you ever caught that. But, um, uh, it, I haven't even seen it, so I don't know. It, it's not in, in continuity, uh, as a, as a, uh, just like with all Elseworlds comics. Uh, so, uh, But it it was good. Um, not like perfect, not like mind-blowing, but it was good. Good, you know. Uh, I thought the acting in it was phenomenal. Um, that that's where it was really good. But uh, he deserved that Oscar. But anyway, um, this is weird. Um, so the New Mutants is being shat out on uh, on Friday. <laughs> um, this is the last Fox uh, X Men movie, I, I believe. Well, this is this is like the development hell movie too. Yeah, like it, it, it's, it's been, been oh, it's it's coming out. It's been, it's been coming out for forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, it was supposed to be a horror movie of like one of the very first like horror themed uh, comic book movies in like like you know Marvel DC. Uh, you know, hasn't really had a horror angle to it since Blade. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so. Uh, like, I think does does Ghost Rider count? Because uh, like, really. Nick Cage kind of makes it not horror anyway. Uh, I mean the the uh, the new uh, Doctor Strange movie is supposed to be a horror movie, but that's yeah, like a Cthulhu ish. Yeah, yeah, that's supposed to have some uh, horror elements, but this one's also some... that that one scene, that one scene in Sam Raimi Spider Man Two when Doc Ock's tentacles are just flipping out and murdering scientists. Yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. That was like a straight up Evil Dead scene. <laughs> yeah, but uh, New Mutants um, is based off of an offshoot of of the X Men, um, and they eventually became X Force, I th- yeah. think, in the comics. Uh, so that is what uh, Cable's team um, in in the comics. So, uh, but the main character—it's a bunch of characters that not many people care about. Uh, unless you are, like, a super crunchy X-Men Mutants fan. So there's Wolfsbane, uh, who's basically a werewolf. Um, yeah, that name's... I think I know who that is. Magic, who is uh, oh, Colossus's sister. Magic with a K? Yeah, Magic with a K, mm-hmm. uh, which is Colossus's sister. Um... Cannonball, who's the coolest, probably the coolest character. Um, he's the one that has invulnerability, but can like propel himself uh, with, you know, with his lower half of his body. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, like he's being shot like a cannonball. Um, a uh, mirage um, and sunspot. So basically, a whole bunch of, uh, again, a whole bunch of characters that not many people care about. I mean, I, I like cannonball. And I like magic, but they're the they're the most. Uh, I've heard of three of them. I did not know about Cannonball or Mirage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Wolf Spain. If you followed uh, early '90s um, X Men, you would you would know who Wolf Spain was. Um, but yeah. Um, so apparently, uh, this has had all kinds of. You know, this has also had some some wrangling with with Disney because, of course, this is the the, the acquisition happened while this movie was being made. Um, so, yeah, I think this is the very last one to be released as a Fox movie, um, and it's also being released, like, shat out during COVID, so, uh, into theater, theaters of all things. Um, so, who knows how this is going to turn up, um, it can't be much worse than Dark Phoenix, so, <laughs> um, yeah, right. uh, I'm interested to see, because, like, they don't have a bank, they don't have bankable characters in this, so that probably affords them a lot of, of artistic license um, and can probably have some like real consequences to these characters you know they can get probably get killed um, you know kind of like with suicide squad if you have characters that nobody cares about and don't have like a marketing budget behind them uh, you can kill them all you want um, so um, you know then there might be some actual consequences in this or it might just be a movie that is completely forgettable and also is like a mess. Um, which it more than likely will be because of all of the problems that it's had. So, um, but this one is and has been a pleasant surprise. Um, also on Friday, coming to uh, on-demand services, uh, Bill and Ted Three Face the Music. Uh, so Bill and Ted Face the Music uh, is coming out on those, and I am a big fan from of uh, the Bill and Ted movies from when I was a kid. So. Um, 
I, I'm excited to see this, and you know, um, uh, the the original uh, actors are returning. So, uh, did you ever notice that Ted looks kind of like John Wick? <laughs> um, maybe, maybe they're all part of the same. Maybe they're all like you know Neo in in doing a different program. Um, that, that's probably the case. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, you you have um, Alex Winter, uh, who who's Bet, Bill and uh, Ted. Uh, who's played by famously by Keanu Reeves, and everybody's like really shocked that Keanu Reeves would want to come back and do this kind of thing. Because... Well, considering how many like straight man fuck shit up movies he's been doing lately, and just going back to like, whoa, man, like that's whoa, that that's that's bizarre. Well, apparently he's remained friends with Alex Winter uh, during this entire time, and Alex Winter is has been known as a, a producer even back in the 90s he he made like a whole bunch of stuff for mtv and he even had his like own comedy movies and stuff he had a few experimental projects like called freaked and the the box um so like they're like really really off the wall like early 90s mtv kind of stuff um but um i mean go back and watch the original bill and ted because it's it's a it's a delight i mean it has it's just one of those cool late late 80s movies that is, is a fun ride the entire way through and the second one uh, I mean the, the first one is all about collecting historical figures uh, because they need to uh, pass their their um, history report because they are failing and if they fail they can't make a good future happen where the entire world's problems are solved by the music that they would make if they were together um, like, like they get a time machine um, sent to them so they go to they they collect uh, Socrates, Billy the Ki- Kid. Uh, they 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 collect uh, Sigmund Freud, um, Joan of Arc, and like a whole bunch of other uh, historical figures to help them do their historical uh, figure report. And uh, it's it's a lot of fun because they're 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 airheads, you know, they're 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 valley guys from that time, and uh, they they mispronounce everything. They call Beethoven Beethoven. They so call Socrates <laughs> Socrates. Um, so crates, yeah. come on. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's really amazing. Um, they they bring Napoleon to a water park called Waterloo. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and they like they put him on a on a on a on a big water slide and all this other stuff. But anyway, the second uh, one, uh, they they up the ante by ch- changing the premise to they have to go to uh, heaven and hell with with the uh, phone. Oh booth. yeah, I heard about. That. And, I heard about that where they where they play stupid little board games against death. Oh well, death. They don't know how to play chess, so the joke is that like death yeah, that has old, to play, like, 19, them, play them. Nineteen what thirties or forties black and white movie where they play chess with death. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, was it the ninth, uh, the the gate or something? Uh, the twelfth gate, something like that. Anyway, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, the Grim Reaper shows up like that famously. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll look it up. But go ahead. But uh, yeah, in that uh, they have to play him in Battleship, and they beat him in Battleship. Um, <laughs> but uh, oh, apparently, death playing chess comes from like a painting from the 1400s. But the movie uh, is the Seventh Seal. Seventh Seal. That's what I meant. Um, Seventh Seal. The Ninth Gate, though, I I still recommend it. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> has nothing to do with this, but I still recommend. It. Yeah, that Johnny Depp movie. Um. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, no, that, that that's by uh, David Fincher, isn't it? Um, I I right don't here. know, but yeah, it's not a Tim Burton Johnny Depp like this is Johnny Depp just being like a straight man through the entire movie. That's no, good. It's good. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the second one, uh, the the version of hell that they go to is fucked up. Um, uh, <laughs> and like very personal. It, it, it's like it's comical, but also like oh my god, yeah. Uh, so I, I haven't actually, you know, I I've never seen either movie. The the only thing I've seen is just like that stupid scene I was describing, where it's like, if you want to get past me, we must play the games, and it's like fucking Battleship, and they keep <laughs> beating him. Uh, well, best two out of three. Uh, uh, b- 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 best three out of five. Okay, dude, we'll do it. And just kick his ass constantly. Yeah, no, but uh, it, it's 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 a good one. Uh, I definitely rec- um, recommend them both, but uh, the second one kind of even parodies the first one. Uh, I, I love oh, when nice. the sequel does that. Uh, but yeah, I've been. Uh, people have been hoping for a third uh, Bill and Ted for a long time. I mean, it was a successful franchise. I mean, it had video games and um, and uh, cartoons and even a live action series. Like there, like wow, yeah, wow, yeah. There, there was a whole bunch of stuff following uh, Bill and Ted, and um, the third movie was 
get this was me uh there was a a movie that was written uh as bill and ted 3 but was not made as bill and ted 3 can you guess what that is no because i don't know bill and ted oh Uh, wayne's world no but that's kind of a good guess um, okay. Okay. It's oh. Bio- then again. Then again. Wayne's World was an SNL sketch, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, written by okay, uh, Mike okay. Myers and Dana Carvey. But yeah. um, it was Biodome. <laughs> that I have seen. Oh wait, no, no, wait, no, no, no. I haven't seen it. Uh, was Biodome Polly Shore? Polly Shore and uh, one of the bald ones. I think it's Billy. Yeah. Well, all right. I, I might be just going way off course here, but was Polly Shore in the movie In the Army now? Yes. Okay, that's what I saw. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry, I have not seen Biodome. Was that the movie where the trailer was like, if if reincarnation exists, I want to come back as a leotard? Yeah. Was that, was that, I didn't even get that as a kid. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, um, I mean, everybody was surprised that, you know, Keanu Reeves is obviously like a lot more in the limelight than uh, than uh, uh, than Alex is. And yeah. um but Alex has been been a successful producer for a long time, but he hasn't been like an A list celebrity like Keanu has, and yeah. um, so like people were surprised when he went on. But the, apparently they're really good friends and were able to get a script out. And Alex Winter is producing the movie, so uh, I have hopes that it'll be you know at least like a fun um, adventure. So uh, I'm I'm excited for it. I, I'm I really am. Um, and what what a great name, by the way. They, yeah, they, face they face the music. The music. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, like, the implication is there's going to be some sort of, like, having to deal with consequences of something or other. Well, it, that's exactly right. So, uh, I, I told you what the first one was all about. The first one is all sure. about the people from the future sending back help to them so they, they could be, be, become uh, wild stallions and save, save the future. Yeah. Uh, so, apparently, they haven't saved the future yet, and that's the problem. Um, and oh, is this is this going to be a Terminator Two, Terminator Three thing? Like, sorry, negative future was faded after all. <laughs> well, they're <laughs> like, well, basically, uh, they've they've shown in the trailer, like, okay, so where where's the music that saves us? Like, what, what, yeah. what where is it? Like, the people. Oh, from is the this going to be? Oh, oh, they back actually back. have to make the damn music now. Like, yeah. now's the time. You, you have to do it. Come on. Uh, so uh, <laughs> apparently, it's like a heist kind of thing. They have to what. They have no, all, all, all they need to do is just hijack the Statue of Liberty and play some good vibe song no, all over New York City, get, and then everyone will feel good. Get this. Uh, the premise is that they need to find themselves in the future so they can steal their own music from themselves. Oh, that's very Back to the Future. <laughs> they have to steal their own music from their future selves so they can make the music. <laughs> that sounds it. familiar. Like, Back to the Future did that, but that also sounds like... Or something to that more directly. That sounds familiar. That's, that's also an inherent time paradox, because if they couldn't think of it now, then exactly. they wouldn't have gotten to that future point. Exactly. But that is kind of funny. But, uh, Ted, you know that who... new sound you've been looking for? <laughs> uh, Ted, uh, who is uh, Keanu's character, he says, but isn't that stealing? And he's like, it's not stealing if you steal it from yourself. <laughs> I mean, I wish, but can't you can't you get into trouble for plagiarizing yourself, even though that's like horseshit? Uh, if somebody else owns your intellectual property, yes. Oh, if somebody else owns it, but like, all right. So th- that 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 was um, uh, so John John Mellencamp uh changed labels and he made a song that sounded similar to his one of his older songs, which was with one of his older labels. So they sued him, and he was just like. Uh, and his argument was like, I have a style, sorry. Like, Yeah, like, this is how I think of things. Uh, well, well I, th- it was just I like, music th- like this. Yeah. Th- this, this didn't go into like a legality thing, but when Mighty Number no. 9 came out, or was coming out, a lot of people were like, I know this is kind of like, you know, like a Mega Man game, it's like a not Mega Man game, but the characters, like, they, they really look like Mega Man characters, like, and, and Afune is like, yeah, like <laughs> you're saying that my art looks like my art. Like, yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, let let's face it. With Akira Toriyama, I mean, you're not really. Um... Yeah, I can't believe Dragon Ball Z ripped off of Dragon Dragon Warrior, Dragon Quest One, yeah, or whatever. But with him especially, it, it, 
his his art style is very samey. <laughs> his faces are I like every woman's face. He has one woman's face. He has one man's face, and, and about three haircuts. I mean, let's face it. And uh, like e- even in Chrono Trigger, like the final boss of Chrono Trigger is like, or not the final one, but like one of the final ones is like humanoid. Cell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about this. I I am going to rent it as it comes out. I was I want I did want to see it in the theater, but under the circumstances, I'm glad yeah, no. that I have the opportunity to uh, watch it at home. And um, also, I I really quick want to mention this before we move on to fan stuff, Lotus. Um, uh, I uh, wanted to mention that we have um uh, I I recently picked up Fight Crab. Have you heard about this at all? No. So, um, there has been a video going around of a crab who, um, was, like, destined to be, like, cut open, you know, and, and sold or whatever, and, and, and cooked or whatever, and it just straight up grabbed a knife and threatened people with it and ran away. (laughs) That's amazing. Like, with its claw. So, um... I'm pretty sure that's the inspiration for this game, um, but it's kind of like, imagine Virtual On, but you are piloting realistic crabs, and, hmm. and both the sticks are uh, manipulating their claws. Sure, sure. And you're fighting against um, like all kinds of uh, crabs and other marine things that are similar to yeah, crabs. Yeah. Um, and you can block with your your um you, you like everything is opposable and, and 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 articulated and uh it's a lot of fun because like there's all kinds of like awesome techno going on and th- the game starts out with you uh like in an arena just like in 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 uh virtual on but it it's you know a very realistic one like you start off on a beach in in shallow water uh fighting other crabs but uh, it escalates from there. Uh, eventually, you're kaiju size and fighting other kaiju size ones. Uh, you Sounds c- good to me. You could start to grab uh, things in the environment, like palm trees, and smack them with it. And then um, you fight. You go up against um, the first major boss is a lobster with a knife and a gun, like just a oh, gun. Oh fuck! <laughs> and he kicks your ass because he has a gun. <laughs> he just straight up has a revolver. <laughs> <laughs> it is hilarious. It's bananas. Um, and it is a versus game too, so it's a lot of fun versus. So, um, yeah, but it has a has a campaign mode, um, like that that um, you know has all kinds of stuff in it, uh, and it's hilarious and amazing and uh, like bananas. Um, it 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 kind of has that. Um, some of the levels have that kind of like Katamari Damacy feel. Like some of them are like you're in somebody's room and there are all these toys around and you can use those. Oh sure, sure. Um, you know, it has all kinds of environments in it too. So I I just went. It came out at the end of last month, but I didn't catch on to it until uh, just now. But uh, it's it's uh, a okay. But uh, yeah. Um, how about fan stuff, Lotus? Sure. So we have a few comments. Uh, Fred Kozak says, Fighting Vipers is not a, quote, a great game. Eh. It's all right. It's all right. It's yeah, it's nothing era. to really write home about. It's okay for the time. I mean, Although, it's certainly better Japanese than the version, games, um, if you ask yeah, me. Japanese version is Pepsi Man. There's there's that. Yeah. That's all That's all you need. It's got the theme and everything. Uh, Josh11188 says, Apparently the demo for the Tony Hawk, like the demos on PS4, is only available after you pre-order. Which defeats the purpose of a pre-order uh, yeah, and of a uh, demo. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, I really hate that shift. By the way, like you've probably noticed this. Of betas used to be like, here if anybody wants to look at my game and test it for bugs, it was sort of like a public QA. But now, like, you got to pay to get the privilege of seeing the game early in its broken, unfinished state. I mean, usually. Like, do, do, can... Uh, early access games turn out to be freaking great once they're fully released. But I yeah, I just it. like that 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 period though, where like you can like pay to get into the beta, um, it's just obnoxious. Yeah, I mean the early access games that are high profile, all of them have been like the best of their, um, the best of their like like their types, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, school filmer says. Who knows? Maybe I am a mad cat after all. It, that that was in my response to like Mr. Schmoozle goes nutso. Like, 
it's it, it's it's like a meme. Like I, mean, I don't know, like I don't know, I don't know how you'd bring up that that game once, but School Filmer always seems to find like a context to make it work. Like this reminds <laughs> me of Mr. Smooth Wheels. Like, and how uh, the that fuck brings do you me even... to Windjammers and Red Bearded Men? Yeah, it's like you you wouldn't think you'd be able to bring up. Yeah, well, I mean that that fell off a while back, but like, yeah, you wouldn't think we'd be able to bring up Windjammers so much as we do, but I don't know, make it happen. So Mr. Smooth goes nuts. So why not? I mean, so it's all good fun though. But I'll stop bringing that game up so often. You know, you don't have to stop bringing it up often. It's just like it's just funny thing, that that's the game <laughs> that you managed to bring up. <laughs> like the way, that, like the fact that you're able to, like, is amazing. And he says, I do remember LP, like me, Lotus Prince, playing the piano during the intro to the original Resident Evil Let's Play. Uh, that was quite nice and also funny, considering I've heard the Moonlight Sonata being used in another game I've played. Only it was used to unlock a coffin which someone had fallen into. Yeah, Moonlight Sonata is one of those songs where, like, if you don't play the whole thing, if you play, like, the early parts, like, da na 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 it, it's very elegant, but it's also very simple to play. Like, when you when you get a little later into it, it gets trickier. It's, like, for release, like, the opening is, like, what you teach like young kids like first learning piano sure but then the middle part is like super hard out of nowhere <laughs> wow. but the only part people know is the beginning part that like, which is like it, it sounds cool but it's like it's it's not like a day one song but it's like, it's like a, a year Canada one song is, for sure it's, it's super easy to play but um yeah you know, like so like again moonlight sonata cool. if you only hear the first few bars it's really easy to play um but, I mean, the, the whole thing is, like, four pages. It's like, oh, okay, okay. Um, Living Corpse says, I don't know, Lotus. Majora's Mask looked pretty scary to me in that it shat for 240p resolution. Uh, and he also said, I played the mu- the flute in music class. I sucked at it. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's not something you uh, you care to flout? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, and then finally... <laughs> General Ledger says, I do not play any musical instrument and am tone deaf, much to my wife's chagrin. Uh, by the way, props on using the word chagrin. Uh, she went to a I performing like arts... I like that chagrin. Cut your jib. Uh, that's coming up in, a, in an upcoming Let's Play, by the way. Uh, she went to a performing arts school, majoring in piano and vocal. When we were dating, she was playing for a family gathering and asked me to turn the sheet music pages. Okay. We ran into a bit of a problem at the end of page one. She thought I was reading the notes to know when to flip the page while I was waiting for her to signal me to do so. Oh, God, that reminds me of... You know what that reminds me of? That This is a weird thing to bring up. But I mentioned this a long time ago, but Yakuza 5, uh, there's, like, a mini game where you join this... Well, when you be- one of them can't do it. You become one of a wacky comedy duo. This is more of a Japanese-specific thing where you have these really fast-talking comedy duos where one responds to the other in contextually amusing ways. But... That game, like that mini game, is really hard to run smoothly in America because not only do you need the contextually appropriate response, but you also need to time it right. Because if you wait 15 minutes before saying like "oh yeah" or something, like the joke falls flat. So, like all the the text is in English, but th- there's no dub. The voices are all in Japanese. So my timing. Like, I would wait for the guy to, like, stop talking. But by the time I realize he's done that, like, I'm losing the timing. So it was really hard to get right. Like, I had to fail that a couple times and listen for, like, not actually understanding Japanese, but, like, audio cues to figure out, oh, this is about when he's supposed to stop. That shit's rough as hell. So, yeah, if you, if you have no idea how to read sheet music, you, like, you wait for the pianist to just stop playing or something. It's like, oh, I guess now's the time. Like, that's, that's super hard to get right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, she thought I was reading the notes, but I was waiting for her to signal me, so she was flabbergasted to learn that I was musically illiterate. Amusing in hindsight, but embarrassing at the time. As for what's going on in my life, I've been working double shifts for an audit the last few months, and I've sadly dropped a lot of stuff to concentrate on that. Yeah, it's, it's rough, but you know, real life happens, man, that's what you focus on first. For sure. And then, um, finally we have a question, this time from Fakafan. What's your favorite video game bestiary? As in the enemies, uh, and this was back when I was uh, streaming Sweet Coden. I mean, now I'm streaming Sweet Coden too, so it's similar. But he said Sweet Coden surprised me with how cute the enemies were. Yeah, just in general, except for like really late game stuff, there was a pretty cute aesthetic to like most enemies you fight in that game. Um, I don't know about my 
favorite bestiary, but I will I will definitely give out a shout out to Shadow Tower, the FromSoft PS1 game, because that that game's bestiary is its whole thing. Like each floor has, well, like first of all, enemies don't respawn. Like you can clear the game of enemies, so you're only gonna fight like up to six or seven of the same type of enemy. You know, throughout the entire game, there are some enemies that only show up once. And if you if you look up the bestiary, because you can look up anything that you have fought and killed, it's it's pretty massive. It's like a hundred enemy types, and only a few of them are like recolorings. That game's creature design was very original. Also, fun fact: the first boss, well, maybe the second boss in that game, was basically Artorius from Dark Souls One's DLC. And they also, this this was where those, again, Dark Souls 1, you know those big mushroom men that beat the shit out of you? Uh, they came from Shadow Tower. Wow. You could, you could actually see a screenshot of them on Hardcore Gaming 101's article of Shadow Tower, I, I, if memory serves. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, yeah, like, there you go. FromSoft's been telegraphing this shit from the beginning. The Artorias guy didn't fight like Artorias because it's a freaking first-person PS1 game, but... He was a corrupt knight who had, like, a bum, evil left arm. I was like, yo, really? <laughs> like, it's, it's pretty on point. It's great. Um, I, I have two um, ones that are way up there, uh, probably my two favorites. Uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Um, yeah, that's also a large, fantastic, original bestiary with weird shit, yeah. like, like flowers opening up and there's a woman inside them and she shoots stuff at you. I think you might have mentioned that there's, last time. There's all it's kinds great. of unique enemies that only show up once uh, as well. Yeah, and like I mentioned, my, like my personal favorite, the boss, Grand Falloon, the Legion boss. What a, what a concept. Yeah, lots of references to all kinds of different mythology as well as um, all kinds of different stories across eras. Um, yeah. I, I really love uh, everything about that game. And it also had my interest up so high because I wanted to learn more about those characters so I, I went to the Castlevania dungeon back then so mm-hmm. I have like a lot of memories uh, and, and good feels uh, associated with uh, with you know researching those characters and looking up everything about them and uh, uh, you know finding out that some of them were for pre- previous games and all that other stuff and some of them were you know mytho- mythological references that I didn't know um, sure. So, um, you know, I that that was a big thing for me. Um, and a more recent game, uh, the Ammonomicon from uh, the Enter. The That's Gun- a very good one, uh, Enter the especially Gun- because of how legitimately clever, like, because they're all Lots gun pun, pun names, yeah. but like, they they had like old school Dungeons and Dragons nods, like like a Displacer Beast. Yeah. It was like I forgot what it was called, like. Like, instead of the Mind Flayer, they had the Mine Flayer. Mm-hmm. Displacer Beast, they had something. I forgot what it was, but it was stuff like that. It's What's just the like, oh, wow. name? I forget. Um, Beholster. Beholster, that's right. And yeah. the, the Medusa, the, the Gorgon, was the, the Gorgon. Gorgon. <laughs> I love it's that. It's so stupid. Uh, I love that. Uh, the Vulcan Raven reference. Uh... Yeah, which which already, that's already a gun name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Revolver Ocelot. It's like, it's it's there for you. Yeah. Speaking of which, the um they that. they had they actually have um like Cam Clark show up fighting you in like I forgot if it was a Hind D or a, or a Harrier, but it was um like a Metal Gear Solid thing, and it does the Metal Gear Solid thing where it's like you know voiced by Cam Clark. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, and he actually has vocals. It's fa- <laughs> like ah, oh, it's fantastic. Um, uh, in the same vein, I, I really like, uh, I, I just thought of this, I, I really like Hollow Knights because it... Yeah, I, I was gonna mention, yeah. if you like, if you like Gungeon's bestiary, then Hollow Knights is, like, right up in there. Yeah, I actually have a physical, um, copy of that, um, Ho- Hollow Knights because it also yeah, has... the journal? Yeah, it has, uh, all the yeah. lore associated with that character, too, and, uh, that's it's how very, you find very out good, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of that stuff is by, through the lore. It's very good. Um, so yeah, I'm. Um, I like anything that that exp- um, like colors. It's you know what, even before... well, anything that gives you a bestiary. Like I, I was talking about Evergrace before. Even Evergrace. Pokemon. Even. I mean the Pokedex. Yeah, the Pokedex. Yeah. It's great. But like even like even Evergrace. Like when you kill an enemy, you can go to the shop and buy 
the data for it. Mm-hmm. So you could look up some basic little thing. Like, yeah, that's nice. You know, I like stuff like that. I, I wish Dark Souls did that. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you, you, you can buy the art books, but like, I, I wish Dark Souls gave you a best area because those and like Bloodborne, yeah. those enemies are brilliant. Like they're brilliant. And again, for the third time, Dark Souls one. You know those, like clams. Yeah. Those little walking clams that instead of pearls oh. inside them, they have human skulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the way that their little feet, like, doop, 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 as they just kind of come toward you, I'm like, no, they're like the scariest things. Um, so I'll give you a for instance. I kind of had like a real world version of this that I, I didn't remember until just now. But um, yeah. one, of the thi- one of the things I absolutely loved growing up when I was a kid is I, we had a subscription to Nintendo Power in our house. And um, sure, sure. we got one of the special issues, which was an entire guide for, um, this was before they started doing separate um, strategy guides. They they yeah. every once in a while would dedicate um, a, a special issue to an entire game. Uh, well, yeah, like issue number one was game. like the map for Metroid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and well, now that one that one ended up being in the in the uh, Star Trek um, themed. Uh, oh wow! One, but uh, they had specific um, red um, magazine. Uh, ones for specific games. So um, they, they did one for Ninja Gaiden 2. Uh, they did one for Final Fantasy. And uh, they did one for the NES 4 score when they were advertising that. But uh, they also did one for Super Mario Brothers 3. And that was like my favorite issue of Nintendo Power. Um, sure. And so they had the maps of all of the levels in it, which was awesome because it was just... Uh, like, I am a real big sucker for maps. So cool. Uh, but they also had every single enemy in the game and uh, like a little text blurb about every single one of yeah, them and yeah. they were named and you wouldn't get those names from the game because you just hop oh, on Oh hell head. no. Yeah. You know, well and back in those days all the lore was in the manual like here's a turtle thing walking up to me I don't know jump on it like yeah. like who cares just like the gameplay is what Mario is all about so the only way you're getting their names is if the manual mentioned it, or I guess Nintendo Power. Mario Three was the first Mario game where I felt like there was a, uh, you know, a, a a whole world to explore. You know, there was yeah, a greater yeah. thing going on, and um, I mean, two got close to that, but uh, um, you know, one was just like, you know, get to the end of the game. Um, but yeah, but three, you had different castles. Um, oh, you saved the king here. Now go and do this other king, and go on this bat like this airship to get there. It was great. But yeah, I mean, like uh, all the names of the characters, like they they had um, Boo was called Boo Diddly back then because you know it's it like Bo Diddly. Yeah, um, yeah. All of the Koopa kids had like um, pop culture influenced names, which I didn't understand at the time. Um, yeah, Lemmy. Wendy. That that was what that was the thing. Like lo- like the the Ludwig von Koopa. Like oh, like Beethoven. Lemmy, I didn't get it all because that was more of like Let me kill a myself. contemporary thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Exactly. Um. So, or, or um. You know, there there was even uh one that was just called like Roy, who looked like Roy Orbison. Um. He had like, that. Yeah, was another one I didn't get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like uh, the, was, uh, um one of them was Morton Morton D- Downey uh Downey uh Morton Bowser Jr. or something like that, and he's supposed to be Morton Downey Jr. Um, yeah, just Morty. And that, there was I, I forgot, who do you know who Wendy was? Wendy O of a, from a punk band from okay. the eighties. Uh, so and but, there was Iggy, which was Iggy, Iggy Pop. Pop yeah. That one, that one. Well, I, again, I didn't get it at the time, but you know, now. But, but yeah, you, and we're missing even one Koopa, I think, had but, blurbs yeah. about their personalities and that, all that kind of stuff. Oh so, yeah, um, oh yeah. In a way that they made a bestiary there because it wasn't in the game, but it was it was there physically, and I still have that issue to this day. And I um I flipped through it with fond memories because like it helped paint a picture of a game that otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, all that much description about it, you know. Well, yeah, it, it, I, I, I had the world. same. I had kind of a similar thing with um, Altered Beast and the Sonic the Hedgehog games because those would give you basic descriptions of the levels and of the enemies. And like Altered Beast, that's the most basic game in the world, but its manual is like fucking thirty pages because it goes into lore and like the bestiary and everything, including the bosses, except for like the final boss, which you know, fair enough. But like, like, that's great. I love stuff like that. I wish Isaac would have one. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. Um, you can at least look up the enemies. Um, but they don't have like descriptions in, like, of their personality. No, they like don't. Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah, but you could still at least see them. But yeah. I mean, um, the Pokedex is great because you get all kinds of lore about 
like the Pokemon that you you wouldn't see during the game otherwise. Yes, yes. Uh, especially like the creepy ones, uh, like you know the Drifloon and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so much of the Pokemon universe is fucked up, and like people just kind of like look the other way. Yeah. Like, never mind that there's a creepy, grabby Pokemon that just steals children's souls. That, 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 like, just be careful when you go out, 10-year-olds, when you were ready to become a Pokemon master. Um, this guy also has a really, has really funny, like, descriptions of everything, including, like, all the weapons. So, like, uh, it has, like, the weapon, it's like, oh. Speaking of which, I also love, I mean, this isn't quite a bestiary, but, like, a weapon bestiary, which, um... Gungeon also has, and Evergrace actually has, a- and actually all the Souls games, because you have uh, item descriptions, just not monsters. Yep, yep, yep. The closest you get is Boss Souls, to give you a little bit about the boss. Alright, well, I, I think we uh, we did a good job with those. Um, uh, that yeah. one, um, I'm sure there are plenty of other ones we're missing, but those are the ones that, um, that uh, uh, come to mind for me, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's probably good for me for now as well. Okay, uh, so that is the show for this week. We want to thank all of our fans who contributed questions and uh, comments. Uh, guys, you've been hitting it out of the park lately. I, I, I keep saying that, but you you, you guys have had, been really engaged lately. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Absolutely. Um, uh, please keep us supplied with awesome topics and comments by submitting questions and topic uh, and comments of your own via the YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While there, please give us thumbs up, likes, and five star uh, ratings on iTunes. Um, it helps promote and spread awareness of of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You could also catch us on Tuesday uh, for our sister podcast, React Consciousness, the in-depth look at this week in our lives. Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bold on pretty much everything. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, I uh, just finished The Swapper, for that matter, or getting right. conversations with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon accounts, which can be found at patreon.com slash Lotus Prince. All right, everybody. Well, well, we will catch you on Tuesday for another episode of Reactive. We'll catch you then. Until next time, everyone. And uh, next week for some more Castlevania. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.